Hi there, and welcome to our LA Times 2022 baseball season preview. Uh, I'm Jack Harris, our Dodgers beat writer, joined by two of my predecessors in that role, columnist Dylan Hernandez and writer Jorge Castillo. Uh, guys, we're just a couple days away from, from opening day, so let's get into some of the big questions and, and our thoughts going into the season about the Dodgers and and the rest of the league. Uh, first off, you know, it's a team going into the season, a lot of talent in the lineup, a lot of talent at the, at the top of the, the pitching staff, but but some questions too for a club trying to bounce back from a, a loss in the NLCS last year. Um, what are your guys' biggest sort of question marks going into the season with this team and, and what you're going to be looking for early in the year? They're going to make the playoffs. I mean, to me, this is a given. I don't see a scenario in which they don't. Um, I think Julio Rios is going to have a spectacular season. You know, I mean, as good as he was last year, I think he's going to take another step into superstardom. Like you said, the one, two is really strong. Uh, after there, there, there are some question marks, but they do have a lot of, you know, capable arms, right? Clayton Kershaw's look pretty good this spring. You know, if they can get some innings out of guys like Heaney, uh, Gonsolin, whatever, I think they can kind of patch it together uh, and get to the playoffs. And at that point, you know, trade deadline, we've seen these guys make moves before. I assume they're going to do it. Uh, from a lineup standpoint, uh, you know, obviously adding Freddie Freeman to what was already probably the best lineup in the National League. I expect them to be even better there. Uh, if there is a question mark to me, it's the bullpen. I mean, that said, that's kind of the same deal with with every team every season. So, you know, and again, that's something that they can also address later on in the year if they have to. Um, you know, and I, I really think that, you know, the the kind of haves and have nots in baseball right now, the disparity is just so big between teams that are trying and teams that aren't. Obviously, these guys are, you know, on the high end of the trying pool. So, uh, you know, I just think that uh, I don't see them not getting to the playoffs. And, uh, you know, once they get there again, I, I like, you know, the fact that they have bets and Freeman. Uh, you know, I think that there's, they're going to be able to, uh, you know, score enough to, uh, you know, be, you know, to reaffirm their status as being the favorites to win the World Series this year. I think that the biggest question was two things. First of all, it's the, it's the, for me, it's the rotation. You mentioned Julio had a great season. Obviously, he can make a next step up. Um, Walker Buehler is the other guy, opening day starter. Uh, Cy Young Kennedy last year as well. Uh, those two guys are coming off huge workloads. Um, you know, it's one of those things, you know, in the past, everyone used to go 200 innings and bounce back. These guys have never done that. We see time and time again, some guys don't bounce back from those kind of workloads. Um, so that, that's something to keep an eye on. Because after that, Clayton Kershaw looks good in spring. But, he, you know, he basically, he almost blew out last year at the end of last season. Um, and then after that, Andrew Haney has not looked good this spring. Uh, Tony Gonson has had struggles in the majors the last couple of years as a starter. And then after they got Tyler Anderson, David Price, Dustin May, maybe after the all-star break, you got Bobby Miller, Ryan Pepio, Landon Nax, sort of triple A guys and pro big time prospects who could help out this year. But there's a lot of questions there in that rotation, in my opinion. And then lastly, it's health. You know, last year, a year ago, going into October, we were like, oh, this team's going to win the World Series. You know, then Max Muncy gets hurt, you know, the last day of spring uh, of, of the season. Um, you know, Justin Turner gets hurt in the playoffs. Clayton Kershaw's not around. Um, you know, is this team is going to make the playoffs, like Dylan said. You know, they got the Diamondbacks and the Rockies in the division. You know, the Giants lost Buster Posey. The, San Diego, the Padres don't have Fernando Tatis for two months. Um, this division is not, you know, on paper, not that challenging. They should win, you know, 100 plus games. Uh, but once you get to October, which is, you know, according to my math, six months from now, a lot of things can happen in six months. One point this spring, Dave Roberts said that could be a top 10 group in the league, but he also said it's the group that's that's probably going to keep him up most at night, especially because of the lack of depth that they have there. And I mean, the lineup obviously speaks for itself with just the names and the, and the pure talent there. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, you need some guys to bounce back from, from maybe not their best seasons a year ago. So it's a team that can be as good as anybody in baseball. Um, but it's also a team that has the highest expectations of anybody in baseball. Dave Roberts guaranteed a title. The fan base, you know, they, they won a couple years ago, but they haven't won in a full season in front of their home crowd with the parade, all those things. Uh, our colleague, Bill Plaschke, said this is a year they have to win a title, so I'll ask you guys the same thing. Is this year for the Dodgers, is it a title or bust year? Is it only a successful year if they win the World Series? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the standard in this town, you know, and unfortunately, different sports. So it's, you know, it doesn't quite work the same, but people got spoiled during the Shaq and Kobe years. You know, they got used to titles being automatic. And I think that, uh, you know, fair or not, that's the standard in the city. Doesn't matter what the sport is. So absolutely. You know, and I think you ask any of the players, I think you go into the clubhouse and ask them, they will tell you the same thing. So, yeah, absolutely. They need to win a title this year. 
I mean, high, highest payroll in baseball. I mean, this team is designed to win now. Um, you know, they got a lot of guys signed to long-term deals. A few guys, you know, Freddie Freeman and, and, and Mookie Betts are here for the long term, but not a lot of guys. You know, Mookie, um, Max Muncy's a free agent after this year. Clayton Kershaw's a free agent after this year. Um, a couple of other guys are, you know, Cody Bellinger, Julio Urias. Those guys will be free agents soon. They got to start winning. You know, if you want to win a little series with this group of people, um, you got to start doing that this year, maybe next year. But a lot of guys aren't going to be here after 2023. You yeah. brought up Cody Bellinger. Where, where, where are you guys with him? What do you guys think? I mean, where, where do we see? We've either seen him be great, like rookie of the year, or MVP, or just like a barely, you know, offensively, uh, like a below average player. Uh, defense has been consistently pretty good across the board. But where do you guys kind of see him offensively this year? Yeah, he's definitely not a guy who's back to his MVP form of, of 2019. Now, I think that the encouraging thing for the Dodgers is that when they ask him to really simplify his swing and just be competitive at the plate in the playoffs last year, he was able to do that. Now, this spring, he's tried to bring back a little bit bigger of a swing. He's been trying to drive the ball more because his shoulder is healthy after it wasn't for most of last year. And, and the results have not been good. You know, the Dodgers do not envision Cody Bellinger being a slap hitter who hits less than 20 home runs in a year. They want him to be a power guy from the left side of the plate and getting back to that point um, ha has not been pretty so far. So I think again, similar to last year, if they ask him to or need him to be a little more competitive at the plate, he can, but you know, he's getting paid $17 million this year. He has another arbitration year left after that. He's getting paid money to, to do more than just be a, an okay hitter at the bottom of the lineup. And, and for him to get back to an elite level guy, a guy who can really be at the heart of the order, he, he still seems a, a, a ways away from, from getting back to that point. I mean, Cody Bellinger is obviously super talented. That That's not the question. The problem is, you know, I don't care what they tell me, what they tell us. If you switch your batting stance every single at bat in spring training every day, like something's, something's off there. Um, you know, guys don't do that. And he has to figure something out, one way of going about it and go with it. Um, you know, last you mentioned last October in the playoffs, he was great. He simplified things. He, he, he drove the ball. He had a walk off home run in the playoffs. I mean, the guy was really good last year, but he needs to find an approach, stick to it. And, you know, hope, you know, for hopefully for the Dodgers, the results come after that, but the guy's talented. He just needs to sort of figure out an approach. The angels very quickly uh, feels like, you know, same problem as usual. They have no pitching. Uh, you know, last year they went out and bought a lot of cheap lottery tickets this year. They went out and bought a $21 million lottery ticket at Noah Syndergaard. So I guess, uh, you know, I think the, the success of the team is going to depend a lot on what they get out of Syndergaard. Looked pretty good last night. Uh, so I guess the question, how many innings do they get out of Syndergaard and how many wins do you guys think the Angels win this year? With Syndergaard, I'll put the over-under on innings at 115. Um, you know, I think with a six-man rotation, they're going to be cautious with him. He's coming off Tommy John, like you mentioned. You know, there's always going to be a question about can he stay healthy over the course of a full year? But even if he can, they're going to try to manage his workload a little bit. In terms of wins, uh, I'll put it at, at 81 at this point. I think it's a team that still has some holes. I'm still not convinced of their pitching. You're going to be asking Mike Trout to come back from, from missing two-thirds of the season last year with an injury. And you're going to be asking Shohei Otani to do something similar to last year when he had one of the best individual seasons in the history of the game. Um it's still a really top-heavy roster and lineup that if everything clicks, they could be a playoff team. They could maybe even be, you know, a fringe contender. But, you know, the last couple of years, something always goes wrong. It's, it's asking a lot to ask everybody to be at the top of their game and everybody to stay healthy and nobody to have drop-offs. So I think it probably ends up being about another 500 season again that ends up with no October baseball. 81 is a good number. Um, I was thinking around the same range, but – MLB Network just ranked their top 100 players as subjective and kind of dumb as it is. Um, you know, Otani was number one and Mike Trout was number two. A team with the two best players in baseball should not be, we should not be discussing like, you know, will they be good this year? They sh it should be how many, you know, how deep are they going to go in October? But that's obviously not the case with the Angels. They've been in the playoffs once in like 15 years and haven't won a playoff game in a long time. Um, but, you know, with the Angels, the, the, you, you mentioned the top heavy thing, Jack. Um, the last team that I remember, you know, the sh most recent team I can remember that won a World Series of top heavy rosters, the Nationals. You know, they rode like six guys on pitch on that pitching staff and that, you know, Rendon and Juan Soto, a bunch of other guys in that lineup. But the Nationals had the pitching. I'm kind of with you guys on the win total. The one thing that I will say, though, I think uh, we're going to see Otani again take another, you know, I know Joe Madden was kind of trying to downplay the expectations saying, you know, if, they, if he does kind of what he did last year. 
uh, he'd be happy with that. I think he's going to kind of make last year look in retrospect, like just kind of a starting off point. I think he's, uh, you know, getting better as a pitcher. I think he's going to actually have some protection in the lineup this year. Uh, so even though the team might not be worth following necessarily, I think uh, he will be. Good. You guys want to throw out some World Series picks here before we get out? I'll take the Dodgers. I'm just going to, I might as well just lean into it. I'm going full homer this year. <laughs> Uh, that's, I haven't really thought of a world series pick. Everyone's picking the white Sox. It seems like, you know, the Braves are up there, the Dodgers, the Mets. Uh, I'll go with the, I'll go with the Braves back to back. I, I like the Braves too. I think they're just a little more balanced. Um, I trust their pitching a little bit more and, you know, they lost Freddie Freeman, but they had Matt Olson. They're still one of the best offensive teams in baseball. So, uh, yeah. Ronald Acuna is back. Yeah. Acuna, oh, so yeah. Do, you, do you think, does Kenley get the last out this time? Oh, sure. That, that would be a that'd be something that'll be something all right, all right well thank you everybody for joining us i guess and uh yeah uh please uh read our work at latimes.com backslash sports and uh or even better subscribe to the paper you'll have something to do while you drink your morning coffee <laughs>